Peace to you, my family in Christ, and welcome to another devotion. Thank God for another week. And I trust it was a week of the devil's defeat. Rejoicing in God because he made us and not be ourselves. And we allowed him to help us. And wherever we were challenged, thank God that we could see today a new day, a day to begin fresh a day to be renewed and to give God praise. And so I want to encourage us to walk into this weekend, slow walk with Psalm 34. Let our lives praise God. Let our lives bless God. Let our lives be a testimony of the grace of God that is inside of us. And verse 1 of Psalm 34 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. The word of God to the people of God. It's personal. The psalm made it clear. This is what I will do. It is a command to our soul. One part of the psalm says, I say to my soul, Bless the Lord. There are times when we want to do otherwise because of the vicissitudes of life, the pressure, the challenge. But we must say, so I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Blessings and praising God are common themes throughout the Bible, particularly in the psalm. The word bless in this text comes from the same root word the Hebrew says, me. Yes. Thus, to bless is literally to bend the knee, to kneel before a sovereign. And this one is God Almighty, Elohim. And so as we say, I bless you, God, what we are saying in our spirit, I kneel before you. I bow before you. You are holy. And I pause to acknowledge you. The word praise and boast comes from the same Hebrew word. The word that occurs in the phrase, hallelujah. That's what the world should hear from us as believers. It should hear our hallelujahs, not cursings and condemnation and bad talking. No, they should hear our hallelujahs as believers. They should hear our amen, so let it be God. They should hear our praises to God from our mouth. But the praises should be powered from the inside of our soul that is kneeling before God all the time. Sometimes our praise is so weak that right after we read praise, we say something otherwise. But when our praise is powered by our soul kneeling before God, it makes the difference. As believers, our lives should be a testimony of the grace of God, his power over all, and that he is authentic, he is genuine. Our lives should say that our God is accurate, he's reliable, more importantly, he is trustworthy. Our God is no wishy-washy God, no, he's not like the other gods because they're idols, because when we seek him, he answers us. That's verse 4 in this text. When we cry to him, he hears and saves us from all trouble. Verse 6, read on this weekend. Walk slow with Psalm 34. He's a God who hears. He's a God who answers. And this is what we should be cooking up as believers. We should be kneeling before God, while praising Him in our living, so that the world can taste and see that God 
Elohim, the self-existing one. He is good and his mercy endureth forever. Father, we give praise to you today. We pause and say, my soul will kneel before you while my lips praise you all day long because of what you have done. You are a deliverer. You are a prayer answering God. You protect. You keep. You're the God who never sleeps, nor do you slumber. You're the one who comes from the enemy's camp in victory, not defeat, not limping. Would you come out in the greatness of your strength? I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save, strong to deliver. That's the God we serve today. So we lift our hearts and we bless you with all that is within us. We praise you. We kneel before you. We say hallelujah to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We don't deserve it. We are messed up, bust up. There are things about us that is not right, nor righteous, but we serve you, the living God. We give you thanks today. And we give you praise forevermore. Let the redeemed say so today. Let the believers declare you today. And we give you honor. And we give you glory. As we pray for those who lead the nations. Including our prime minister and all of parliament. Their families. Those who lead in our country today. We pray for them. Thank you for those who are leading righteously. Soberly. We pray the blessings of God, those who are leading otherwise. We pray the mercy of God right now, that their hearts will change for your glory. You can still save from the utmost. Jesus still saves. And we give you praise today. We give you thanks for the peace of Jerusalem, for families everywhere. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. And we will bless you so that the world will taste and see that the Lord is good. Thank you that the redeemed will live today, will live this weekend in victory. We pray for those in bereavement today. Touch, heal, and deliver. Those who may be sick, convalescent, we pray your deliverance right now, your healing, your power. For those who are lost, we pray salvation. Let it come today to their lives. We pray for the harvest. That you send forth laborers today. Send me, O oh God. That I may go and love on someone, even today, who are lost and undone, who needs a way, who needs a help. Up. I give you thanks that my light will shine today. Your name will be exalted. Give you praise and honor this day, now, and forevermore. Amen. God bless you, my family in Christ. Let's be strong in him. Let's bless him today. He is worthy to be praised. Have a great day in the Lord. Amen.